Ed, seriously. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, yeah, I've had yeah. I've had the honor of talking to and interviewing a couple of B-17, you know, some vets from World War II, actually, that are unfortunately have since passed on, you know, but uh, greatest our greatest generation right I'm there. Tony, yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. No doubt about it. No that's doubt about it, it. yeah. I truth. mean, they lived, my dad lived, my mother and dad lived like they had nothing, and he was a millionaire when he died. They, I, I mean, they ate TV dinners or they ate whatever little they would eat, and they gave everything to their their. Your children. Yeah. Respect. I mean, that, they're, that, they're that. used to living on nothing. You know, they gave up everything for the wars. Different so. mindset back then, you know. Yep. Yeah, the, the it's greatest uh, generation. A lot's yeah. changed in the last 30 or 40 years. True. Really, a lot has. Too yeah. much. T- t- too much, yeah. yeah. True, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm lucky that I'm right on that line of, you know, you know, I'm almost 35 now and being born in the 80s, but once you're born in, like, you know, the late 90s, man, I mean, something changed Something, something there. changed. Yeah, That's yeah, funny. Really I, I was, I was in a conversation. I, uh, I, I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was changed. with a couple clients of mine that, that are buying a home over in League City, and we did the inspection, and actually the homeowner was there, and we, we a similar conversation. Yeah, it's, it's funny how that works. Yeah. 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 Yeah, talking about the kids still living at home and well into their 20s oh yeah 24 yeah. 25 yeah. living at home you know mom still does laundry yeah. still makes some sandwiches yeah. like it's crazy i mean what what does it come to and oh it's not their fault it's not their fault and, and the i fault. understand i understand that, that there is a lot of um things that are against um there there is some research on this and why millennials are where they are but but the fact that yes, society and politics and parents are catering to it and not trying to fix it is crazy. You know, yeah, True. too much mothering, yeah. too much. Yeah, uh, way oh, making yeah. making it too comfortable. I guess you got to you got to let the let the birds fly away. You got to let them go. You know, got to let them go. Let them That's leave it. the nest. You know, they, they were having. You know, I mean, not but. Yeah, you were an adult, 16, 17, 18. You were a soldier. You know, back in the day, you were having kids. You had family. You know, I mean, you're not an adult now till you're. 22 you're you're not even not you're 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 the same mindset as a 16 year old 40 50 years ago you know way different yeah that's a different different thing that really is i wish i get into boating right yeah (laughs) yeah boating would change your life you know you just got to go 160 and yeah it's a whole new ball game yeah look at the world differently my average customer is about 40 to 50 years old yeah yeah same here same here i sold a boy to a guy yesterday in his 60s and he got up on it in five minutes I was like, man, this guy is a that's bit awesome. older than I expected, wow, you know, but awesome. I, I don't judge a book by its cover anymore. And, uh, yeah, he got up within a few minutes. He did amazing. Are you trying so. to get me on a board? I think he is, I man. Am. I, I am. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what's ne- next, uh, the whole Jetster Famous scenario, right? Yeah, so we, we've got, I don't have the knees for it. That's yeah, we've got, the, we've got the Jet Surf Legend class, so we've got to get you in the Legend <laughs> class. And, yeah, yeah, you know. You it, know might all be, the old, it might be embarrassing. We get, we'll, get the, uh, we'll get you with the race boats, the old BMX uh, racer, all these different, you know, guys. And, uh, yeah, man, we'll get you guys on a relay. Yeah, it'll be good. We got to do this at a boat show, huh? Yeah. So I was uh, really disappointed when I tried to have my race last year. You were going to be a big, uh, big member of the audience there at the marina, and we were trying to host this big race there, and uh, it was unfortunate we weren't able to do it. This is the third race now. Was uh, it before? Speaking of racing, because we're both in the racing business, you know. Was that before the uh, Outlaw or after the Outlaw? That was, uh, so I did the Outlaw Challenge in 2018 and 2019. We opened the store in April of 2019, so prior to the second Outlaw Challenge. Okay, yeah, it was April, right? Yeah, and we tried, we tried to do a race. Uh, the Outlaw Challenge wanted us to do a race in the Challenge, yep. but it's difficult because um, it's, Kind of like motocross, it's not a it's not a shootout, right? So we need you know a few more hours out there on the buoys. You got to do a couple heats and qualifications and finals. It's not just who goes around the buoys the fastest one time. It's like a two three day thing, and then you average everything together. Right. So we you know we did the demos, and you know that's actually where John saw Jesper for the that's first where, time. Yeah, that's the first time yeah. I saw. Yeah, I was out, I was out on the uh, the uh, Texas Media but, boat, and uh, I'm like. What, hold on, there's this guy flying by on a board, but I can't. I don't see the boat pulling him. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so we got the call from Paul, which you know, Paul Robinson, who runs the challenge, and right. he wanted us to, to do a race. But we, you know, it's a, it's a five, six-day event. But like I said, it's all about the big boats, and we just – there wasn't enough room for us. So we, we did a huge demo, and we worked with them a little bit last year. But we're trying to maybe implement some type of exhibition race in there at some point. But – we're trying to get racing in Texas regardless, you know, and tied into these boats, and it's all the same market, you know. 
I wish we could, I could get a little more control across the street where they'd, you know, bring more of it over there because it, it's in, it's more of a controlled one place. Yeah, yeah, And you yeah. get more going. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on, but still I think it's good for everybody, you know. Yeah, I think we just got to, you know, we just got to get over there and, uh, you know, work with Rocky and Stacy and uh, – I think there there's a lot of potential, you know, with with jet surf and and with you and the the race boats over there. And I mean, man, you know, our, our first year was awesome. Yeah, it was unbelievable. The first year we did it over there, it was it was the a first little, outlaw challenge. Which yeah, was like oh, 20, yeah. 2012. When, when was this, guys? Like, yeah, oh, the first. Well, the, it was like twelve, I think. Yeah, yeah. the first one at yeah okay. over there. We did yeah. over there. It may have been eleven, eleven or twelve, but we. Uh, had so many boats come over, and, of course, we were running around like crazy. With our the heads. pictures looked amazing. They it had was... awesome pictures, boats all over the parking lot. Like you said, madness. It was just yeah. million-dollar boats all over the place. But everybody was having a good time. Nobody got hurt. No, no injuries, no wrecks, no nothing. It was just everybody having a good time, and, you know, the bar never closed <laughs> over there. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I remember walking out of there 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning one time. Yeah. Going, My gosh, this was a one great day. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. And you know that no, was it's truly one of the special events. You know, I mean, it, it's it's you know, I mean, obviously the air show and uh, the wheels and keels, but I mean the Texala Challenge. And I, I've I've been helping you know helping Paul market it since it started. I mean, it just started. I was just a, kind of a simple poker. Run, we were just right? showing a cover of your magazine. Yeah, right? yeah, you and that was Bruce, a more uh, recent yeah. one. Yeah, but yeah, I, I mean, that you was know, last year. You know, that and was actually really Bruce, uh, you know, helped out with one of the early cover shoots. I think it was. I mean, I think you told me was that Paul's daughter or some, or maybe some girl. I, mean, I don't. I don't know. Or some one of my customers. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, somebody's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, yeah, and then, of course, you know, we, we you know, we've, we've done, you know, a number of covers since. And, yeah, you know, and obviously this year they had to call it off, you know. Yeah, this was, so this is the first time they've called it off then. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And, and you and me actually talked about that. We, you know, there was a time where <clears throat> some bars were pushing to the limits and some festivals were trying to continue. And we actually talked about the viability of the race that year and the crowd and everything. And we both, I think, said, man, I... I don't know if it's going to work this year. And I don't think it was a week later Paul canceled the event. And we said I, that was a smart move. Well, he got in trouble. You know, yeah. All the bars that kept saying, no, we can't take it now. We can't. Because the, the TABC yeah. threatened him. Yeah. If you yeah. had too many people in one place, they were going to close them down for a sure. week or two week, weeks and, or something. And they're already having trouble yeah. getting people in there. And truthfully, that's, part, that's bringing crowds. That's the whole point. You have a bikini out. You have the bikini contest for the outlaw challenge yeah. at, at at you know uh, the bar and you expect to have you know hundreds yeah, you've of got people the there stamp, and it stamp doesn't work if they can't you stampede know. street party and chemo on the thursday sure. the bikini contest on the saturday you know i mean kenny's, but, but, but kenny's party Ken, oh, kenny's man. party yeah they, they canceled yeah. that too right he, he never right. canceled that yeah yeah that was actually and, and that was the one thing that probably was you know that above was any law <laughs> No, yeah, the fact that he canceled, yeah, yeah. that means that even he yeah. was scared, you know, for a minute. Well, yeah, truthfully, well. to Paul's credit, you know, a couple of days after he, you know, put out the press release, you know, uh, then the governor shut down everything. So, I mean, it, right, it would yeah. have been shut down yeah. anyway. Yeah, no, so it, it he, wouldn't have know, happened. Yeah, so. yeah, so he, you know, they, they he were. He might uh, have saved a little bit of money by doing it. You know, when he did it, then waiting for the yeah, well, yeah Texas, people would shut down. And yeah, you, you yeah, keep paying for yeah. stuff, and then you're like, oh, it's all canceled. You know, a couple of my friends said, "Governor, please open everything again, please." Bars. True, true. No, I, I've been saying that. I'm, yeah. you know, and that's a whole. We've talked about that. I mean, what's you know, obviously the 51 percent alcohol thing. I mean, right now bars are. You could argue bars are being unnecessarily vilified, you know, and, and uh, you know, we've talked about that. Actually, I did a... Yeah, if you don't serve I, food at your bar, then, yeah, you're, you're, you are shut down. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if, you, that, if your yeah. bar doesn't have a kitchen, which any bar shut that has down. a kitchen, I mean, they've at least transitioned sure. to, uh, to a restaurant. took a little while, but yeah, they were able yeah. to check the boxes. Change yeah. their li- license, but, uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's tough, you know, and obviously I, I, I know personally a lot of breweries, the Railing Distillery in San Leon. I mean, Which we've talked about a yeah, lot. Yeah, they're, close they're, friends of the show. And are, they're taking the hit do right a, now. They're taking the hit right now. Are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, because, yeah. you know, breweries and bars, especially the bars that don't have kitchens and the distilleries, you know, they're. Yeah, so it's it's tough, but you know, and we understand. I mean, we're not trying to belittle the you know the scenario, but uh, but it is kind of tough when a certain segment of business is being targeted, 
you know, when you could argue other business, you know, I mean, what, what, you know, so, you know, we've talked about it. I mean, you know, but we're getting back to normal. So things are, things are getting back to normal. Yeah, you know, yeah. the governor didn't open up things last week, like we kind of expected, but Hey, let's, let's take a precautions. Let's be safe. COVID's still real. Um, but you know, yeah, I mean, think, things are slowly actually, getting back to normal, actually, more outdoor venues. They're, they're opening the patios and I'm a, I'm a big patio guy, man. I, I come, you know, from Houston, but I lived in San Antonio for seven years. The patios um, are way more prevalent, and, and, and we, we need more patios here, and they've had to expand some of these patios. I mean, some of these places are, are redoing their outdoor areas just for this reason, and so I think that that's, that's good in that sense. But yeah. That's true. Actually, one venue that I think we uh, I think we might be doing a show there here soon, you know, that Man, we were planning I'm on. Excited, yeah. yeah. We had one scheduled in March, and then, like we said, the world changed, but a barge 295, uh, you know, obviously they're, you know, both an outdoor venue and indoor venue, the, the, the only floating tavern in Texas, but, uh, you know, they've been able to, uh, you know, transition, pivot, and actually they've got some very exciting news coming up that yeah, I think so uh, we'll be talking about next week, hopefully. Both those places are rich in history, super iconic. You've got Cabo Bar and Grill. You've got, uh, you know, Barge 295, which is the old Turtle Club, which is just incredibly famous, uh, both on the water, Texas, both yeah. beautiful, and they're both doing really well right now. So, you know, they're, they're, they're playing it safe. They're wearing masks. They're doing social distancing, but you can still go out and still have a good time because you're outdoors. And you're not stuck, you know, um, you know, um, at a table or at the bar, you know, so uh, they're able to make it work. Uh, so I'm, I'm seeing things go back to normal. I'm liking it. Yeah. And, and truthfully, to double down on that, uh, I've got some exciting news. I mean, some people might know this, but uh, Scout Bar is going to reopen on Thursday. OK. So yeah. The, the yeah. top music venue in this area. It's an indoor music venue. It's, it's been around it's, forever. Yeah. yeah. It's strict, Everybody knows strict, Scout Bar. Strictly a bar. It, brings in national acts but uh they they're 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 launching they're opening back up on thursday so how I long think, have they been closed i think John? they uh well okay so they were they were closed for a while then they reopened then back in i guess it was late june when the 51 percent rule came into play they had to close again and they've been closed since late june and i think i think they know something that we don't know that i think the governor is probably about to make some kind of announcement i know they i know they've got some lawyers you know that are that are involved sure. in the mix so uh, i think i think maybe you know some of the bars or you know the the 51% bars 51% alcohol bars are going to be reopening in thir- on Thursday. Well, that's good yeah. news. Yeah, that's yeah. great news yeah. for the area. Yeah. That's, God bless, yeah. man. Regardless I mean, of being on the water or not, but we've talked about this before. Yeah. Scout bars Scout technically, bar's on, the technically water. on the water, guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's you, a little you can get body there by there. boat. Yeah, you can get. Bar- they just expanded their patio, uh, so you can actually see a little bit of water hanging out there. Yeah, you can uh, kind of get right back the there by a very right there flat, a very shallow boat. Yeah, yeah. No, Robert. Robert Jacobus from Topwater Grill. Not the fifty-four foot MTI or anything. Yeah, yeah. But but Robert from Topwater Grill says he can. Get, actually, he can get underneath Nasterod One, so he can get way beyond Scout Bar by boat. Yeah, he claims to ride over actually, there by Franca's and yeah, Baskin Robbins. He, he and the actually whole deal. I don't he, know, but he yeah. claims to get to Red River <laughs> Cantina. Sure got plenty of water that day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wow. Yeah. He claims to get to Red River Cantina by boat. Hey Jordan, I see the little kitty cat. Yeah, you, yeah, so uh, that's a guard dog, right? right? Yeah, that's a little guard dog. So uh, we're here at the Jets Rep Houston studio, guys. We rescued a little kitty here. Uh, we're on the Bazzoni property, which has been here for 50 years, right on Nassau Road 1 in Redsdorf, right across from the Endeavor Marina, where Bruce's, uh, you know, beautiful office is at over there. And, uh, yeah, man, we, we, we heard this cat. It was actually last show, last Wednesday. Me and John did an episode. I heard a little kitten crying um, right here on the property and uh, was able to get it the next day. And, uh Cute, healthy little kitty Damn. entertaining us right now. Yeah, so it's yeah. <laughs> this is right. the jet, jet Surf Facility Cat. Uh, her name is Kirby. She's a girl. She's healthy, and uh, I think she is here to stay. So, uh, yeah. Actually, you, all, you all keep talking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take yeah. that camera and put it on her. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we've got this little Jet Surf kitty. She's about five weeks old. She's pretty she, entertaining. I'm she, she's she's, been, she's right? been a little trip, you know. Kitties uh-huh. are fun. I'm more of a dog guy, you know. I've got my uh, my 10-year-old beautiful Weimaraner. I oh, love yeah. to death. Bruce knows. He's seen him over at the marina many, many times. He used to come hang out with me at the office. Uh, we got to get him out on a boat here soon. But, but, yeah, this kitty's been a nice addition to the Jet Surf family. Um, pretty cool. Yeah, like you said, the guard dog to our new 4,000-square-foot showroom, soon-to-be showroom. This is the Jet Surf Fusion Studio, the home of Jet Surf Fusion Racing. We've got the Scene Magazine coming in here. 
this is, you know, the, the, the heart of jet surf and all of Texas. Um, you know, we're still launched off at the Endeavor. That's our academy. But this is the, the, the main facility now for jet surf in all South Texas. So we're expanding. We're growing. We've got more space. We're